My name is Joe Murray. I'm a gastroenterologist at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Today, the FDA announced the regulation of what a gluten-free food label means. So, the Congress passed an act in 2004, and as part of that act, it asked or directed the FDA to define what gluten-free would mean on a label. Now, what the actual regulation means or governs are uh, if a manufacturer chooses to use a label gluten-free on their foods, what does that actually mean? And the FDA has now defined that as foods that contain less than 20 parts per million of gluten. Now, the foods, it can allow foods that are naturally gluten-free, foods that are made up of ingredients that are entirely derived from gluten-free sources, and it can even include foods that have ingredients that have come from wheat, barley, or rye, but it's very important those grains have the gluten removed, or what we sometimes term rendered gluten-free. It also governs the possibility of cross-contact, or contamination of the food product with gluten in processing, for example. But whatever it is, or however the food is made, it must contain less than 20 parts per million of gluten in order to be labeled gluten-free. Now what about things that say no gluten, or made without gluten, or other wording? They really, acknowledge, they really want manufacturers to use the term gluten-free. Now there are some limitations to this. First of all, it's a voluntary labeling. Manufacturers don't have to label their foods gluten-free if they don't want to. But if they want to, then they have to follow the guidance provided by the FDA and meet the regulations. Now what happens if they don't? What happens if it turns out that the food has more than 20 parts per million of gluten? Well then it will be considered misbranded and subject to re regulatory action by the FDA. The other limitation is it doesn't go into effect right away. Um, it goes into effect 30 days from now and the manufacturers have another year to bring their labels into compliance. So it really isn't going to be truly in place until August of 2014. There are other limitations. Meats and egg products, but not eggs and shells, um, are typically regulated by the USDA. And this regulation does not cover USDA regulated foods, nor does it ca cover some alcoholic beverages which are controlled by a different agency. So for example distilled spirits, malted wines, or any wine that contains a percent alcohol more than 7%. Those are not regulated by the FDA and this labeling law does not cover them. Now what about restaurants? As many people now know, there are you know, restaurant menus that say gluten-free. Well, it really applies to the ingredients used in that restaurant. Are those ingredients coming in packages that are labeled gluten-free? And if they do, then they should comply with the regulations. But it's hoped, or at least are stated by the FDA, that they hope that restaurants would follow these broad guidelines. So what does this really mean? Well, what this means is that now, when you see a label that says gluten-free, it has to be gluten-free based on that definition. Um, this applies not only to domestically produced food products here in the U.S., but also foods that are imported and regulated by the FDA. If they're labeled gluten-free, they have to meet that same definition. So why has it taken so long? Well, one, to get agreement on what the threshold was. And the agreement is not only on what is the least amount of gluten that can cause problems, but also how do you measure that? And that itself requires uh, you know, chemical analysis to determine is there gluten in the food and at what level. But at least now we have a standard, a standard that's enforceable, and that if something is labeled gluten-free and somebody thinks it's not gluten-free, well then there is at least a pathway towards enforcement of what that label means.
And I think now patients with celiac disease who need to be gluten-free, that when a food label says gluten-free, they should be able to trust it.